Art Fine. Art Fine's Poker Party Company from Los Angeles with our very special guest, Disappear Fear. Fear? Try no, try another one. Oh. You got another one ready for me? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do another song. This song needs a ten minute introduction though, which we won't give it today though. We'll give it a nine minute introduction. <laughs> this is a song that was um, started out as a poem that I did not write. It was written by a Harlem Renaissance poet named County Cullen. Um, and I found it and sort of rang true for me as well. And I added some of my own words to it. The song's called Who's So Scared? Very different than the first one. <laughs> to get into gear here.
up by society So I start looking at the world we have And while it's not completely bad There's a lot of room for improving people of color and the gay movement ooh, 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 So scared, so scared With glee, I saw a Baltimore young keep looking straight at me now. I was eight and very small, and he was no bit bigger. And so I smiled, but he poked out his tongue and called me nigger. I saw the whole of Baltimore from May till December. Of all the Uh, disappear fear that's lowercase d lowercase everything uh, what's I didn't I read the press material but I didn't get the meaning of disappear fear any meaning at all or just what does it mean to yeah. those two words together you speak English <laughs> 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 that is what really what it means I mean the, the meaning of the word disappear fear is what it means it means something usually different for everybody oh yeah we got a mic both we got we got Cindy mic but we don't have oh, Sonia sorry, mic okay yeah, yeah. Um, it means whatever it means to you yeah that's how do I do Clip this? Clip it on the left. Okay. Like, for some people, it means stage fright. <laughs> uh -huh. um, for some people, it's any phobia. <laughs> um, it seems like what's between people is um, fear. <laughs> uh -huh. So I thought a good way to get closer on this planet or the surrounding ones might be to disappear that. Just yeah. an idea. What was I thinking? <laughs> okay, uh, let me talk a little about my guest now. Uh, left, mm. First, I want to introduce my co-host who hasn't said much and may not. But uh, today Before it's uh, uh, Kit Robertson, who under her former name, Mercy Bermudez, was lead singer of the Heaters, um, my favorite what band, a switch, huh? my, my favorite band in Los Angeles ever. And uh, I'm just pleased to be surrounded by all these people I really admire musically, both sides of me. Uh, so welcome to the show, Kit. Nice Thanks, to see Art. you. Nice to see you here. Um, and then we have Cindy Frank from Disappear Fear and her sister. Sonia, Sonia Rutstein, Rutstein from Rutstein, Rutstein. both from Baltimore. <laughs> uh, I got this record uh, f uh, from uh, Rounder a couple of months ago or so, and I just flipped. I mean, my endorsement won't, you can't take to the bank, but it's so great. I mean, hearing you just hear those couple of things, to me it's like a, a greatest hits performance, because I know these things so well, and wow. I, I really like them a lot. Thank, Thank you. you. If you want to Thank join you in. Very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. If I could sing, I guess I would. 
Um, okay, so let me ask you a couple standard questions. Uh, what's the first record you bought? Oh, no. Hermits, Hermits, Greatest, Greatest Hits. Hits was the first <laughs> album. You bought it together? Yeah. I don't know if we bought it together. That was well, it was actually that. hers, but I played it. <laughs> I mean, the first 45, I think yours was Big Rock Candy Mountain, wasn't it? No, that was a, that was that mine. No, that was a gift. The first um, 45 I ever bought was um, Lazy Day by Spanky and her. Ah, okay. You know, mine might have been Elvis's Kentucky Rain. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I just had Spanky on the show about three months ago. You did? Yeah. Wow, yeah, I yeah, love yeah. that. She's living See, they, there was a skip in the record, so I learned that particular song with the skip. Uh -huh. <laughs> Good. And uh, did you grow up in a musical household? Yeah. Mm -hmm because your parents played, or were they musicians, or did you take a lot of music concerts? Music lovers, real music lovers. My dad played everything. We had a guitar, mm -hmm. and on, we had sort of like a basement, you know, with stucco and stuff, and my dad, we had a guitar, like, on the wall, you know? For decoration. Yeah, and I would take it down and play it. That was before I could play. I just, you know, yeah. pretend I could play. Yeah, well, when, <laughs> she like was, now. when she was about three years old, she would, she would play the piano, and it was mostly just banging on the piano, and then uh, one time my parents had a bunch of you're going to hate me for saying this, but my parents had a bunch of... Especially because you were only, what, one? Adults. <laughs> I had a bunch of friends over, and Sonia sure was just sort of banging really on well. the piano. And my, and my mother says, oh, it's another Paderewski. And Sonia turns around and she goes, oh, Mom, I'm not that good. <laughs> <laughs> you probably have it on tape. It's really uh, were they uh, folky-oriented? Because there's a folk music, certainly, big aspect yeah, of your presentation. I think the idea was too, like, the, was that I was just one of those kids who liked a lot of attention and <laughs> the only time when, because we're so close in age, my mom would like set me up in front of the stereo and while he, she would um, take care of, you know, changing Cindy's diaper and feeding her and stuff and I was like mesmerized by that. Yeah. That was like, it was you know, the only thing it was that my pacifier. Because she, she didn't like television, she only so, liked And it was folk music. music, it was Odetta, it was the Kingston Trio, mm -hmm. it was like, you know, a lot of harmonies. Well, what about the, the Dylan analogy, which we don't make from what you've presently done, but I've heard quite, the, the harmonica laden folk rock in this thing is so. Yeah. Dylan suggestive, not Dylan. That's well, but it's, as I it's was great. I was, I was informed the last time we were on um, a cable television <laughs> thing, everybody who's any, you know, is related to Bob Dylan, who's Jewish and plays the guitar. <laughs> but I, we are at some point, um, and I, I, we are actually what? are related. I mean, <laughs> he was given. I read this in his biography. I haven't, I haven't met him, but I read that um, that he uh, was given piano lessons by a, a, a Rutstein, Les Rutstein's wife. In Harriet. Minnesota? Harriet, yeah. It's on page 19 of the one, of the biography by Robert Shelton. <laughs> oh, that one. No, that's not that Is that a good one? Yeah, no. Well, I don't really know. I don't really, I, I don't uh, know. It's unless you pulled Rutstein out of the air. <laughs> so you're, you're saying if it's a Rutstein, it's got to be a relative. Yes. Mm -hmm. Rutstein, sorry. Like I, should, I should, of all things, right, like em emphasize the E-I-N right. hard pronunciation <laughs> because I get a lot of trouble with those fiend pronunciations. Mm. Um, so if you'd had a lot of folky influence, and then Dylan comes to mind, did your folks drag it to, I mean, you're right by D.C., did you go to folk protest marches and stuff like that, or were they activists? Or, uh, our parents? Yeah. No, see, our mother's into classical and opera, so. <laughs> um. No, yeah. I think it was just a way of saying something. I mean, I've always... It's like, and I, I probably will stop doing music when I find someone who's saying exactly what I need to say. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, just kind of, it was like I wanted Joni Mitchell to be gay. Mm -hmm. You know, and she wasn't. Bummer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I just <laughs> started writing songs that really said what I needed to, to hear. Uh -huh. And that's really what I'm doing. Well, actually, that, speaking of the, the gay con content of this, now there's quite a bit of it, and you write all the songs. I mean, every so often there's a mention of gay this or gay that, but then there's the heterosexual encounter with the guy with AIDS, with yeah. HIV, which, of course, is this the debut of the word dick, by the way? I, 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 or, the, or, is, or is it in a rap song, maybe? I, I don't listen. Oh, uh, it's probably in a million raps. Yeah. yeah. But uh, that kind of, that kinda, though, that kinda throws you off when you're reading the rest of the thing, though. So, well, that's, this is a made-up thing, or... Uh, oh no! I mean, like I certainly did a lot of experimentation and uh, stuff, and I, okay. you know, enjoy uh, all kinds of sexuality. I just happen to find someone who happens to be a woman to spend my the rest of my life with, but um, which is great. But you know, I, you know, wherever you're at, whenever you're there. I mean, I certainly didn't want to be gay, so I tried not to be for a long time. Uh -huh. it just didn't work very well. <laughs> We can talk about it later. <laughs> <laughs> back to music. We'll charge you $55. To <laughs> oh, <yeah. talking. laughs> uh, back to music. Uh, so what about the first concert you went to that made any difference? Oh, I'll tell you. For me, it was um, my Uncle Kevin. Our, our Uncle Kevin was playing with Mary Travers from Peter, Paul, and Mary mm -hmm. when Mary was doing a big comeback kind of thing, her first you know, thing on her own. 
and uh, it was at a huge uh, uh, arena and um, a capital center. It's called the USA Arena now. And uh, Mary Travers played first, and then David Bromberg played, and then Seals and Crofts played. And that was my first concert, six row. You know, me and about, I don't know, 70,000 other fans. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was pretty, pretty incredible. So you got a big folk imprint or a big acoustic kind of imprint. Oh, I just love it. I mean, it, it might have been yeah. Ozzy Osbourne or something. It just happened that yeah. this is the way it went. Yeah. Same thing for you? Was that the same concert you went to? Or? I went to that concert and it was fun to go backstage. But no, the first concert, <laughs> <laughs> it was huge. I remember how yeah, big the whole area was. I mean, because it's, you know, they bring in the elephants there and everything at the <laughs> Civic Center. But, um, <laughs> The first concert I went to, I thought I was pretty disappointed. I, I saw Chicago, uh -huh. and um, and I think I was like nine or ten, and I remember them yelling, like people in the audience yelling out hits, and I remember one of the guys, one of the horn players, stepping up and going, "Go home and buy the record," <laughs> and I thought. I was devastated. I was like, I couldn't believe someone would say that. You know, like, why did we come here? We want to hear that record. So, but that's really what I remember from that show. But it was fun. It was loud and bad sound and stuff. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah. God, always a critic. Okay, now how about getting on the road? This is this if is this much air and like heads like in this much of the room, you know, on these big cement walls. Like, Duh, it's going to be stupid sound. You know, good sound was it like the lyric where they saw the symphony at school? All right, you got a, a more or less major label record out. Uh, and you're on tour all over the place, which is great. How do you break out of the local area? How did you get on tour? It's not it's really a major label. It's a big, it's a major independent. It's a, it's a big local label. I, <laughs> I, I, well, I love Rounder Records, though. Yeah, I, me uh, too. Me too. Uh, I've been around for a long time. So you, you made a name for yourself in the D.C., Baltimore area first and then branched out from there? Or were you no. on the road immediately? Or? We pretty much got How out. How long have you been, the two of you? Well, what happened was uh, about seven years ago, I um, joined her, Sonia's band in Baltimore, which was a very popular band in Baltimore. Locally. But locally. Mm -hmm. um, but it was just this side of thrash. It was, you know, Sonia's melodies, but it was, it was pretty raunchy. And uh, I joined that band, and three weeks later, the band broke up. So all so we just had me and Sonia. We didn't. We lost the rest of the band, <laughs> and we had a bunch of gigs booked um, and in rock clubs, in the Baltimore, Washington area around there, and um, so we became Disappear Fear as a as an acoustic duo and played all those shows, played rock clubs as a duo, um, and it was about six months from that point on. We put our, we quit our day jobs. We just started getting a lot of gigs, every, you know, from from everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, starting in, in the Mid-Atlantic and then going south, and then I, I guess it was 1991 when we started to do the whole country. Wow. Well, you're great. I could keep on yakking and so could uh, the kid, but... Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, we could tell you say another thing. She keeps thing. going. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the best thing, the best thing, because I want your music to be heard and um, I do enough talking and it's nice to talk to you, but... Thank you. Are you doing another couple songs? Are you going to do um, I work, uh, the Washington Work song? Sure. Got to get that harmonic in there. Yeah. I guess I should take this yeah. off, though, because then I'll be oh. doubly mic'd. Doubly. Which is... You guys on mic and... Uh, Sorry. Sorry. Another just vamp here. Cool. Okay. Walk so no one sees us sit down or get up, right? <laughs> I'm supposed to make a silly joke. Do you ever notice that? You never see like David Letterman sit down, you know, or anybody. They never, never on camera. Though. Sorry, we're interviewing ourselves. How yeah. rude. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. This is an idea that everybody's going to work in Washington. And I'm, I, and I might add, you're about to start that I. This is this to me. This is tie a yellow ribbon. I can't get it out of my head. Uh. The the chorus in this song has been with me for like three weeks now. I'd like to, I'd go play another record just to get rid of it. Oh no! Uh, yeah, I like it a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. I am my own enemy 
Washington on my way to work in Washington DC gotta make it look good gotta make it Disappear Fear, Baltimore, Maryland, sister act that we like a lot here. Um, we're going to sign off. We only got about two and a half minutes left. Uh, Kit, you didn't say anything the whole show. Is there anything you wanted to ask him? Sure. Uh, what are your plans for the future? For your future in music? Mm. Ah, oh, stumped you, huh? Are you going to make a new record? <laughs> Good. Maybe Good. another seven. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and uh, make another baby. Together? No. <laughs> Together. Cindy's got a baby. <laughs> it's really funny because Cindy's um, baby has my coloring. Oh. <laughs> well, my, my baby has blue eyes and blonde hair ish. Yeah. And, um, and neither. Okay, not my roots, but. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, we wanted, we just wanted, you know, do, do, do songs and, and, and see, you know, how many people can like them. Right. <laughs> okay, well, can we have one more song on the way out? Mm hmm. And I want to thank you very much. Thank you, Kit. Thank you, everybody, Thanks, for sir. watching. Disappear Fear. Greatest. Stonewall, thank you very much. I'm going to quiz you on the Disappear Fear name, though. Okay.
Strap my guitar next to her knapsack She's my lover, she used to be my rival And I don't want my money back What I know is I don't know When I'm sure it's only half the story What I want is a house on a hill But I'm settled for a moment of glory Me and Lisa going down to the ocean with Hot sand burns our barefoot skin She's putting on sunscreen Cause a hole in the ozone The same exact size as the American sin What I know is I don't know When I'm sure it's only half the story What I want is a house on a hill But I'm settled for a moment of glory One man's church Another man's jail One man's feet go Where another man's fail So now I'll throw My hands across to you Nobody's gonna tell me Nobody Nobody's gonna tell me 